welcome to the City Council Forum for Troutdale and Wood Village. This evening's forum is sponsored by the League of Women Voters of East Multnomah County with co-sponsors of Metro East Community Media, Gresham Area Branch of American Association of University Women, and the Coalition of Gresham Neighborhood Associations. I'd also like to thank the City of Gresham for the use of the Council Chamber tonight. I'm Lorraine Griffey, a member of the League of Women Voters of East Multnomah County, and will be your moderator for the evening. The forum is being televised by Metro East Community Media and will be replayed. Questions have been prepared by the League of Women Voters. Three questions will be asked of each of the candidates with 90 seconds to answer each question, followed by questions from the audience. And the audience is invited to submit questions for the candidates on the cards provided. So please raise your hand if you need some cards and they'll be delivered to you and be sure they get back so that we can have them in hand. Timekeepers for tonight are Susan Foster and Sharon Rent. At 30 seconds remaining, a green warning card will be raised. At 15 seconds remaining, a yellow card will be raised. And when the red card is raised, the candidates will be cut off. So at this point, I'd like to introduce the candidates from the city of Troutdale, John Wilson and Tom Slider, position six. And from Wood Village, we have Patricia Smith, position two, and Scott Harden, position three. And I will ask the two different cities different questions, but we'll kind of work you in together, okay? That's fine. Okay, well, we'll start off. Each candidate is allowed two minute opening and two minutes closing and 90 seconds to respond to each question. So Tom Slider, would you like to start? Thank you and thank the League of Women Voters and uh, the City of Gresham for this fine venue. Appreciate the opportunity to be here this evening. My name is Tom Slider. I'm the former Multnomah County Undersheriff. I spent over 30 years in law enforcement and I want to work for the city of Troutdale and improve uh, things going on there. Uh, my experience is in management and supervisory. I had a small break from uh, public service and uh, was in the private sector for about eight years working both in the airline industry and uh, for the American Jail Association as the director of marketing. I just have this passion that I want to do something for my citizens, uh, for the city of Troutdale. Uh, I want to serve. I have served. I'm retired. Um, so I'm a full-time candidate, full-time counselor, and I'm looking for your vote. Thank you. John Wilson. Thank you. Uh, my name is John Wilson. Uh, I relocated here from Oklahoma in 1991, so I've been here for over 20 years. Um, both my kids uh, went to school here. Both of them are graduating Mount Hood here. I also have a great granddaughter and a lovely wife. Uh, I've been involved with the, the city of Troutdale since about the time that I moved in, uh, starting with the schools uh, to support my kids, support the schools to make sure, sure things were moving along. Uh, I met Paul Tolliver, who used to be a mayor of Troutdale. He got me more involved in the city. Uh, I've worked eight years on the city budget committee. Uh, I also was on the ad hoc committee for the redevelopment of the old sewer treatment plant, uh, as well as uh, a, a vice chair of the advisory uh, Riverfront uh, Renewal Advisory Group. Uh, I also chaired the uh, PAC 2677 to get urban renewal into Troutdale. I love Troutdale. I think that my experience of working with the, the merchants uh, goes far beyond uh, my other volunteer. I've worked in marketing, sales, and management uh, for over 35 years. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Patricia Smith from Wood Village. Thank you for having me here tonight. I appreciate it. Um, I come from a small town called Mars, Pennsylvania. I came out here about 27 years ago a single parent with four children. I lived in Gresham for quite some time and then I located to Wood Village. I've lived in Wood Village for 
the past uh, 12 years now. I got into council and government uh, by way of speed bumps. Mm -hmm. I lived on Maple Avenue. There were fast cars going by. I had four children and I wanted speed bumps. So I pestered Wood Village. Dave Fuller was mayor at that time and finally he got so mad at me he said, why don't you get on the council if you wanna do something? And so I did. We never got the speed bumps though. <laughs> it was just out of the question and impossible to do, but I was on the council and I've served it for a few years now. Uh, I was elected mayor and I'm currently mayor. And um, I just fell in love with the town of Wood Village because it reminded me so much of back home. The people are friendly. I walk in the park all hours, uh, talk to my neighbors. They know where I live. If they have a problem, they don't have to wait and come to a council meeting. They come right to my door. That's fine with me. I've never had um, any problems in our town. We're a peaceful, quiet town but I believe we're the kind of town that makes you feel welcome when you come to it. And I'm glad I'm there and serving the town of Wood Village. Thank you. Scott Harden. Thank you, and uh, thank you very much uh, to the League of Women Voters for uh, sponsoring this wonderful event. Uh, is your mic on? I'm not picking you up. How's here. that? That's better. Sorry, in Wood Village, we don't need this many chairs or really a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as I started to yell without the aid of the mic, uh, thank you to the League of Women Voters for this wonderful event. Uh, my name is Scott Harden, and I am running for uh, Wood Village City Council Position 3. Uh, I've uh, served in that capacity for the past year and a half. I was appointed to the council when, uh, when David Fuller resigned uh, his council position. Uh, I also serve on the city's planning commission. I've been on the planning commission for uh, the past three years, and I serve on the uh, uh, Reynolds uh, School District's uh, Citizen Advisory Board for the budget for the school district. Uh, I moved to Wood Village in 2005, uh, uh, bought my first home, uh, got to know you know my neighbors uh, for the first time, uh, got married in 2006. Uh, my lovely wife Charlotte uh, volunteers at the at the city's uh, two annual events. So, in some aspects, when you elect me, you get a kind of a two for one in some of the more important uh, aspects of city government. And uh, I want to continue to serve because I think that uh, local politics is all about quality of life, uh, helping people to improve their quality of life, helping people to maintain their quality of life. And when you when you serve this close to them you can actually see the uh, impact of your work. Uh, the results are tangible, and uh, I just want to uh, continue to improve the quality of life for the citizens of Wood Village. Thank you. And now we'll start the questions, and we'll start with the city of Troutdale. And John Wilson, we'll start with you. Troutdale City Hall needs repair work to work to be replaced. Well. <laughs> needs repair work or replacement or replacement. How would you fund the repair work or replacement? Thank you. Um, City Hall is, is working very inefficiently right now because it is split up in, in many different pieces and it makes it hard for the people who work there as well as the people that they serve. Uh, there's a lot of different ways of, of taking care of City Hall and I went to the city councilors and recommended that they form a city group to, uh, of its citizens to look into this. And they agreed on it. Uh, there is a citizens committee being put together to look at the different aspects of, of City Hall. Uh, repairing it, replacing it, or, or partnering with a uh, developer to uh, lease space, lease to buy, are, are probably our best options for this. I, I'd hate to see this 100 plus year old building go uh, so I'm hoping that we can keep it somehow, even if it's not a city hall anymore. So I guess we'd, ha we'd have to look into to bonds if we decide to uh, uh, rebuild it or repair it. Uh, and the cost of rebuilding it uh, is about as much as repairing it. So I think that uh, probably re repairing it would probably be uh, out of the option. Uh, but I would look into a private development with a, with a developer and then leasing back to buy. Thank you. Thank you. 
I, I've got the question. Okay, Tom. Um, John's absolutely right. The, the old building is, is decrepit, it's falling down, it's going to cost a whole lot to repair. I don't know whether the citizens of Troutdale would be willing to bond. I approve uh, or agree with the citizens committee to see if we can come up with some solutions. I really, really believe that it's going to take a private, public, concerted effort to get a building built that is functional, that can hold all the people, that meets today's safety standards and ADA accessibility. Even if we were to repair the old building, there is no way that it would ever, ever be ADA accessible because of the ground that it's on and the slopes and so forth. So I'm, I'm almost convinced that uh, the citizens are going to come up that they need a new facility, get all the people back into one building, get it ADA accessible. Again, it's going to take cooperation from other government agencies, uh, whether it's bonding, whether it's uh, funding from other uh, federal, state, local agencies, some help there. But the biggest portion of it is probably going to come from private investment. Thank you. Thank you. Then we'll move on to Wood Village for a question. If measures 82 and 83 do not pass, what economic development would you support for the old Greyhound racetrack site? Which one of us? Patricia, I'm sorry. I saw. Okay. Gee, I thought that question would never come up tonight, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I would really like a big old rally because there's still on the ballot and I really wish everyone would just reconsider and think about this because this is just an opportunity that would overflow all of East County and I'm so sorry that the governor decided against it I, I maybe he has 3,000 jobs that he's not telling us about that he's going to bring maybe that's it but anyways um I think we're going to continue doing what we've been doing. Uh, we have an enterprise zone. We have an urban renewal district. We have a meet or beat plan to lure or entice, maybe not lure, businesses into Wood Village where we will match other towns what they're doing to the best of our ability or beat what they're doing to give the businesses more. We have a staff down at City Hall that expedites things. They don't have to go through several departments. They're boom in and boom out. And that's worked well with the several businesses that we have attracted. We work with the Columbia Gorge Consortium. Um, David Eatwell does all the uh, managing there and he does entice businesses to come to East County. And that's what we continue doing. Thank you. Scott, do you need the question repeated? No, thank you. Uh, like the mayor, I also support the passage of measures uh, 82 and 83. Uh, you know, I would I would like to see the 3,000 construction jobs, uh, 2,000 permanent jobs. You know, in Wood Village, um, we have a, a a budget that's really a model. You know, we we are a, a debt-free city. Uh, we've won an award nine years in a row for having a perfect audit. But what we're we'll find for 2013 is that. We'll get about $755,000 in property taxes. We'll need to pay out about $814,000 for police, fire, and uh, emergency communications. So for the first time, our general fund is potentially facing a, a deficit. And the casino would mean about $4 million a year in payments to the city of Wood Village. So that would quickly, uh, you know, obviously close that deficit. In fact, our annual budget is about $9.2 million, so it would almost be a half again increase to our budget um, you know the currently the uh, 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 Rossman and Studer the two lawyers that uh, sort of started this whole uh, uh, drive towards a casino excuse me a casino back in 2010 have an option on the property until uh, uh, I think uh, January 31st of next year so until we can free that uh, option you know I, I think that uh, you know we're sort of left at their at their ideas for how to develop it but, uh, you know, we've heard uh, rumors of, you know, interest from Costco and, and Cabela's. So I think there are opportunities out there. Thank you. Now we'll go back to Troutdale. And Tom, 
How would you attract a greater variety of businesses to the city of Troutdale? Good question. I think we have a nice variety downtown right now, but I think we've got to spread out and expand um, the areas. We can do it with uh, uh, business incentives, but I think what we really need to do is really start tooting our own horn. I don't think we've done that well enough in Troutdale. We've got a unique little city down there. Uh, there's some vacant storefronts. There's some vacant properties that I think need to be developed to be able to, to attract the businesses. My basis for running is uh, a public safety issue. And, and when I talk public safety, I'm not talking just police, fire, and medical. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm also talking we have to have safe roads. We don't need potholes and roads falling apart. We don't need our sewer system falling apart. We don't need our wells running dry. So all that compasses and is the foundation. We need to have that infrastructure in place to be able to attract the businesses, get the people or the residents of, of Troutdale to visit, and get some of those Portland people to come out and spend their money in our city also. So we need, we need to make Troutdale the destination, and I think we've got the, the space and the uh, willingness to do that. Thank you. Thank you. And could I get you all to speak a little closer to the mic? John? Okay, uh, you know, I agree with Tom that uh, our, our safety is, is a big concern and, and needs to be in place, but the only way that you're going to be able to keep what we got is to bring in new businesses. And currently, uh, we do not have an uh, economic person looking out for us. We have a couple of partnerships, uh, but we don't have a person that's dedicated to it. We backed out of the consortium uh, this last budget process. I think we need to go back in there and review that and uh, either make some new headway with the consortium and telling them what we need to do and have an agreement with them, or we need to look to an outside agency that will also fulfill our economic needs. Uh, back in 2006, uh, Troutdale approved uh, urban renewal. They've run into a lot of problems. Uh, I've been involved in this uh, for the last six years uh, since I was on the ad hoc committee and also the advisory committee. Uh, with the efforts that the city has put forward, it looks like we're getting closer to getting that done. And that will help bring new business to, to Troutdale. Uh, we need not just focus on downtown because there's many other aspects to Troutdale that need to be taken care of. Uh, there's some blighted areas that need to be taken care of, not only downtown, which is probably inhibiting business from coming to Troutdale, but there are smaller pockets that also need to be addressed. Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll go to Wood Village and Scott. What do you consider the main issues facing the city of Wood Village in the next five years? Well, in, in my last answer, you know, I mentioned, you know, the potential budget shortfall in the general fund, you know, um, and then um, one of the things I think that was facing us uh, was uh, road repair. Um, we used to loan money from the general fund to our street fund. Uh, we've uh, sort of accomplished a program that uh, will generate funds for that by starting a street and stormwater utility. Um, you know, our, our, we had a citizens uh, advisory committee that worked on that, five different public meetings, uh, helped us to uh, develop a rate structure uh, that uh, our citizens uh, could live with and that our citizens endorse. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, uh, housing, uh, particularly affordable housing, uh, is a, a issue that's facing us as our population grows. Our population grew in the last census. It continues to grow as uh, uh, north and northeast Portland uh, neighborhoods gentrify and folks are looking for a more affordable place to live. Uh, as a result of that, uh, Wood Village is a very diverse city. Uh, uh, by at least uh, one uh, studies measure, the most diverse city in Oregon. So I think that uh, we need to start making plans to celebrate that diversity, to uh, learn from our current citizens, learn from our new citizens, you know, some what are their uh, customs, what are their beliefs, what are their desires, and uh, how do we fit those uh, into the transformation of Wood Village over the next five years. Thank you. Patricia, what do you consider the main issues facing the city of Wood Village in the next five years? Well, I think the main issue is with every other city is where to find funding to run the city and run it properly. Like Scott said, our, our budget uh, this year was, was very lean 
In fact, it was less than last year's budget. We have a lean staff. We do a, a lot with a little. And uh, the staff continues to try and find ways to save money. But police and fire costs are going to rise. We have Multnomah County Sheriff as, as our law enforcement in town, and they're the best going as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we have Gresham for our fire, and, and those are two bills that continue to rise. Um, we have um, not raised water and sewer rates because of the economy. A lot of our people are hurting. We, we're not a rich community. We're, we're, we're below middle median income. Uh, a lot of people out of work. Uh, I was out of work myself for two years. I know what that's like. I know that hopelessness and, and trying to get out there and get work. And uh, that's why we saw the casino was such a great opportunity for more than us in East County to, to get people back to work again. Thank you. Now we'll go back to Troutdale. And John, what do you consider the main issues facing the city of Troutdale in the next five years? Well, uh, there's several issues that are, are coming up. Obviously, uh, revenue is, is one of the main ones that needs to be addressed right now. The uh, city of Troutdale in the last budget meeting said that, uh, that we cannot sustain uh, the continued drawing down of our reserves in the uh, quantity that we are. So, I mean, we're going to have to start looking at our budgets closer. Uh, our roads are, are starting to deteriorate. Uh, I would like to, with the city council, uh, get involved with this and get the po problem resolved before it becomes a, a burden on, on the city. Uh, recently, uh, we uh, have some issues with uh, our building departments, and I think there's uh, some things that need to be looked at there uh, so that uh, everybody gets treated fairly uh, and the same way. Uh, the city council uh, sets policy, doesn't get involved directly with the, with the employees, so we're going to have to figure out uh, how we're going to move forward in taking care of those issues. Um, thank you. Thank you. You repeat the question one more time, please. You, yeah. <clears throat> what do you consider the main issue facing the city of Troutdale in the next five years? Obviously, along with everybody else, budget is an issue, but we can resolve part of that by uh, developing some of our areas. We've got an urban renewal plan that, that we need to work on real hard and get that going. Um, we need to really tighten down the, the, the buttons and, and make sure that we're spending the tax dollars wisely. I want to be a good steward of those tax dollars. We need to take a look and make sure that we are spending that money right and doing it correctly. We need to partner with our other cities in, in, in East County and, and maybe consolidate some of the functions that we're doing. We need to work with Metro. We need to work with Multnomah County. We need to work with the state. We need to work with the federal government. We need to be partners with all of those. We can't do it alone. One counselor can't do it alone. One city can't do it alone. So we really need to be collaborative and work together. And I think we can do it. We develop that tax base. We start getting some revenue coming in. We get visitors coming to the gorge, hopefully from worldwide, if we start developing and uh, making it attractive. If we can get some of those Gresham residents to come out to Troutdale, uh, rather than going to the movie theater over here, maybe they could come down to Troutdale, or maybe we should build one in Troutdale. But we need to get some more people coming to Troutdale. Thank you. Be before we go to Wood Village, I would encourage the audience to submit some questions if you had some. Back to Wood Village. What two things would you do in the next 12 months to attract and retain business and industry that would have a positive effect on the economy and civic government of Wood Village? Scott, would you address that? You know, I think in Wood Village we're in a unique position because those things that you would want us to do maybe over the next two years we're already doing. Uh, for the past three years, uh, businesses that already exist in our city uh, of a certain size, if they've wanted to make improvements or expansions, or if new businesses that were going to occupy that same size space wanted to come to town, then we waive their uh, permitting fees and we waive their inspection fees uh, so that they can, uh, you know, get a leg up 
in that expansion or in that uh, business creation. You know, we have uh, changed uh, the rules in our enterprise zone to make them more competitive with Gresham, to make them uh, uh, more competitive with Portland. Uh, as a result, uh, we got uh, Pressure Safe LLC to come to our enterprise zone. Uh, that brought 25 jobs. They're in a uh, building called the Merrick's Building where there's room for some of their customers to come and join them, so more jobs are afoot. And as I mentioned earlier, I also serve on the Planning Commission. And on the Planning Commission, we've really looked hard at some zoning, particularly in our CI zone, where industrial was allowed, but industrial services businesses weren't. So we've set aside a certain segment of the land where industrial service businesses mm -hmm. can come. And one of them, uh, Allwood Recycling, is already moving their uh, truck uh, repair site uh, to that uh, to that uh, new uh, CI zone, and so that uh, brings us a new business and, and creates four new jobs. Thank you. Patricia, what two things would you do in the next 12 months to attract and retain <coughs> business and industries that would have a positive effect on the economy and civic government of Wood Village? Well, I think Scott pretty well covered it. That was our, our, our kind of meet and beat policy where we can do things that bigger cities can't to attract businesses. We can uh, make variances and, and different things in our zones to enable them to do that. In fact, Pressure Safe was one of the ones that came to our council meeting and, and we discussed what they wanted for about 45 minutes and, and passed it. And uh, the head of Pressure Safe uh, came up to us afterwards and said, you, you people did in 45 minutes what it would have taken Portland months to do. And we like to get people in, we like to get them in quickly, and I think we'll continue doing that. Uh, I think another thing that attracts people is the community around. We have two great community events that are second to none. We have a night out in Wood Village that attracts 2,000 to 3,000 people that is volunteered with the church. We have an Easter egg hunt where the bunny comes in by helicopter and kids come from all around. That's another huge event. And I think people want to see that in community. It's not, it's not just the money, it's, it's the whole thing. And I think we at Wood Village, we have all that to offer and more. Okay, thank you. We don't have any audience questions, but I'd like to pose a question to <coughs> all of you, the same one. Uh, what techniques or programs would you recommend for the council to work together effectively with the other cities in East County? And start with you, Scott. You know, because I you know work full time during the day, um, I'm I'm not a, a, in, as involved as maybe I would hope to be or uh, in the future or should be now with things like the inner council meetings that uh, Norm from uh, Troutdale organizes. But I, I think that that's a wonderful idea to get the councils together and talking. You know, uh, Fairview earlier mentioned that they didn't have a program in place where they could waive fees for, you know, permits and for inspections. You know, both Troutdale and Wood Village do. So they, you know, could certainly uh, learn about that, you know, if, if we were together in meeting. Um, you know, it's, um, there's been some talk about uh, making the three smaller East County cities into one. Uh, Personally, I don't think that that's a good idea. Um, you know, I think that uh, when you, you know you come to a, a Wood Village City Council meeting, you see how transparent we are, how fun we are, you know, to 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 work with, how easy we are to work with, and there's there's very little dysfunction. But we're the smallest of the three cities, and so I think that in a in a combination, we get short shrift, which would be to a detriment to all three cities because in addition to a a council that works really well together. We have a city staff that's knowledgeable, you know, effective and efficient, and uh, and and just without uh, parallel, I think, in East County. Patricia, you need the question repeated, please. What techniques or programs would you recommend for the council to work together effectively with the other cities in East County? I think we work together pretty well right now. Um, we work together well on the uh, Metro uh, Connections Plan to try and find the, the, best, uh, the best route to Highway 26, and it turned out there was no best route. There was one in each town, and, 
and uh, I worked uh, very well together with the mayor of Troutdale and mayor of Fairview uh, to decide that we just needed to improve the routes we already had and we didn't need a big super highway going somewhere and destroying our towns. So we already work pretty well together. Um, we go to different meetings together. I'm, I'm employed full time right now, thank God. And um, I go to as many meetings as I can. Um, it's, it's good to have an employer that lets you off certain times for certain things. But I think you have to be really involved with the other councils and get to know them. And that's the only way you're going to be able to work together with them. And uh, I hope that they feel the same way about us. Yeah, thank you. John, would you like to answer that same question? Sure. Um, I know that uh, Mayor Weathersby has been put together a program uh, to where all the mayors get together. Um, it's, it's not really a voting committee, but I mean, they can all kind of collaborate together to decide what, what they can do together. Uh, I remember like with our, our gas situation, uh, we've partnered with the rental school district to help bring the cost of our fuel down. I think there's, there's a lot of things that we could look at with the, each city and, and work together on to bring our costs down to help our budgets. Uh, I think that with the, with the casino or the development of the, uh, the dog track uh, and then with Fairview and Troutdale, I think there's a lot of things that we can do together to bring the industry to us, to, to our enterprise zones, and, and be a team. And, I, and if I get on city council, I'm going to be a team player, and it's going to make it easier for Troutdale uh, having team players uh, to work together with the other cities. And Tom? I'm a consensus builder. I believe in collaboration and working well with others. I work and play well with others. I get along with officials and other government agencies. And I think that's critical. Uh, uh, again, as one, we can't do it. As two, it's better. As a whole bunch of us, it's even better. I don't want to be in the position where Troutdale is doing something better than Wood Village or Gresham. I want us all doing the same thing because we got that big gorilla to the the west that we <laughs> constantly keep fighting. Um, we don't have the separation of cities like we used to. We're, we're all kind of right together now. There's no dividing line. You leave one city and you're in the other and I'll bet you that 95 percent of the people don't know where that city line is. They need to know what services they've got. We've got to be similar in what we're doing, but individual also. So the collaboration is critically important. We need to work together, and we need to talk. Thank you. Thank you. And, and we do have another question for each of you. For Wood Village, says, I know the, the Grange ballot measure, if passed, would bring an additional and needed revenue to the city in Wood Village. If it fails, what can be done to help Wood Village financially, to keep Wood Village financially viable? Patricia? Well, we weren't actually banking on that revenue. We were going to wait and see if it happened first. Uh, we're, we're doing with what we have right now, but like I said, costs are going up. We do need to attract more and more businesses. I think that's the only way you're going to bring revenue. We can't ask people that are hurting to pay more money. You know, even even a little bit, like uh, like the seven dollar and fifty cent fee that Gresham is is going to have per per citizen. That's that's like three gallons of milk to people with children. That's a lot of money, and uh, we can't ask that. So I think the thing is just to get businesses in there so that. Uh, they will supply the, the needed funds we need in the future for rising costs. Thank you. Scott, would you like to address that? Well, like the mayor said, you know, with, the, with or without it right now, uh, we are uh, financially viable. You know, our, our, our budget is actually smaller than last year. You know, uh, we are looking for ways to come up with that to, that, to cover that potential uh, deficit in the general fund, but we have, uh, you know, passed our street and stormwater utility uh, so that uh, we can uh, maintain our roads, maintain our stormwater systems. Uh, so, um, and like say we, you know, our 
we're very transparent in our budgeting and our budget has won an award the past uh, nine years in a row at uh, at audit time so we definitely need to see that entire urban renewal zone uh, developed and we do uh, market it aggressively you know we have the meter beat program uh, you know in order uh, to have the vision that we have of the housing you know obviously uh, we need increment there to uh, start that uh, tax financing uh, so we'll uh, continue to market it aggressively uh, you know if should the uh, casino uh, not pass thank you for Troutdale uh, Tom would you like to answer the question of how do you support measure 82 and 83 and what impacts if any do you see for the city of Troutdale if the measure passes I support it for the jobs for the jobs that it creates the biggest impact that Troutdale would have would be uh, probably traffic but there's some pluses even for benefit even uh, that will benefit Troutdale in the use of hotels restaurants fuel stations and so forth um, I don't see a big impact on crime uh, I think that's overplayed uh, I supported it for the jobs I supported it as an economic uh, boost to not only Wood Village but East County as a whole so I supported 8283 thank you John well if, if it does pass um, I think it's going to be positive to our, our merchants uh, because they will see an increase of traffic coming there uh, unfortunately I don't I don't see it it passing uh, we have certain agreements with the uh, tribal casinos that we need to honor and I think that you know when you look at the amount of money that they're saying that they're going to get back to the state which is a hundred million dollars which they estimate is 25 percent of the income that means there's a, that they're bringing in 400 million and all the rest of that money is leaving the state so I, I think there needs to if, if it was a benefit it would benefit stronger with it within the state and I think once the the state gets used to having this money come in that you're going to see other casinos pop up in, in other cities because they're going to get hooked on it the same way we're kind of hooked on the the video poker uh, I travel uh, out in Clackamas and and the amount of video poker rooms is is crazy and uh, I see you know I have businesses around there that I call on and there's people coming in and out all the time so I think we, we really already have gambling and I don't I really don't see that we need to expand it. I grew up around gambling uh, in Lake Tahoe uh, and in Southern California. I take my mom to casinos every time I go down there. Uh, I don't participate. Uh, it's just uh, my own thing. I think that everybody needs a hobby, and that is her hobby. Um, but I think that uh, I, th I think that there could be some positive things. But I'm going to vote against it. Thank you. Thank you. Will you? down to the time for winding up the uh, closing statements. Uh, before I do that, I really would like to thank Metro East Media Community Television for televising all of these public meetings for us and doing the replays. We don't always have big attendance at these, but there's a lot of people that watch it at home, and it sure helps for people to see the candidates. So at this point, uh, Tom, would you like to do your two-minute closing? I would, thank you, and, and thank the league again. This is a wonderful venue. Thank the audience for attending, and thank those television viewers out there, wh whoever you might be. Uh, I'm a 30-year East County resident living most of my time in Gresham, not just a resident but a homeowner. Uh, we spent the last eight years in Troutdale. Uh, as I indicated, I'm a consensus builder. I work well with others, federal, state, local agencies, and officials, and I think that's critical. I'm married. I've got two boys that graduated from uh, Barlow, uh, two stepsons, six grandchildren, no great-grandchildren yet. Uh, I was a widower after 31 years, and then I got remarried and been remarried for about 12 years, 12-plus 12 years now. Uh, my basis is public safety as a foundation for all of the infrastructure in the city. Without the city being safe, people aren't going to come. Businesses aren't going to come. Families aren't going to come. 
Uh, I would be a new face to Troutdale Council. I've got no uh, nobody that I owe. So I would be a new face on the Troutdale uh, with new eyes looking at everything that Troutdale does and hopefully with some new ideas, building a consensus, getting us back on track. Uh, I want to listen to the citizens. The citizens are critical. They're our customers or our bosses, if you want. And I just want to be good stewards of the citizens' tax dollars and spend the money wisely and correctly. I appreciate it, and I would appreciate your vote. Thank you. John? Thank you. Uh, I've been in Troutdale for 20 plus years. Uh, I've worked on many city committees. Uh, I was committee chair of Boy Scouts for, for 10 years, and we've done many beautiful things out there for Eagle Projects, saving the city thousands of dollars in, in their parks. And it's because of team building uh, that that happened. Our, our troop went from eight boys uh, when I first started uh, to 60, uh, which is a very large troop. And we had 30 active adults because we all got together and decided what we wanted to do as a team. And I will be a team player on, on the city council. I worked on Troutdale Summerfest for 12 years, six of those years as committee chair. And we built consensus to make the Summerfest work. And we grew it. And it became a, a, a people started coming back to it. And, uh, and it's, it's popular today because of that. Uh, I worked on the Troutdale uh, uh, Multnomah County uh, Library Siding Committee. So I've worked on a lot of different committees, and, and it's all team building, and we all collaborated together. Uh, I think that uh, my endorsements from uh, all the city councilors at Troutdale, uh, either that or they're supporting me. I got Matt Wan's uh, endorsement. I've got Paul Tolliver's endorsement. I got the, the backing of the uh, Troutdale uh, business group. So I, I think I'm ready. Uh, I believe that the, the city councilors would not assign my endorsements if they didn't believe that I could step in and start being productive right away. Thank you. Thank you. Patricia? Well, thank you for having me again. Um, I'm mayor now, but my council gets to vote for the mayor for next year. I may or may not be mayor again. Uh, I may just be a council person, which I would be happy to be. I have no great political aims or ambitions. I'm, I'm happy in Wood Village, and I'm happy doing what I do. I like being in a small community, and I don't want to get or have people assume that I'm bigger than I am. I'm a very humble person. I look out for our citizens. Um, I'd urge you all to maybe visit one of our council meetings. We're not only council people together, we're great friends. We talk things out, we laugh, we have a good time. We have a lawyer that tells me occasionally that I'm not allowed to say that. And it's, it's all a pretty good time in our council meetings. We get a lot done. Um, I would like to see 82 and 83 pass. I believe jobs are the most important thing right now in this economy, and we shouldn't let anything else come above getting jobs to the people who need it. Um, I'm happy in my town. I absolutely love being on the council, and I love walking my town. I do it every day with my dog at least once. Um, I'm happy to have a chance to come and share with you uh, things going on about our town, and I'd urge you all to visit at least once. Thank you. Thank you. Scott? Thanks again for this opportunity tonight. You know, each of us is, uh, and everyone that's been on the panels this evening has sat here because we're seeking a leadership role. And I think one of the fundamentals of leadership is that you're not a leader if you don't have followers. And the way to develop followers is to be truthful and it's to be empathetic. And, you know, in, in Wood Village, that's exactly what you get from your council. Uh, you know, we're, we're open and we're frank and like the mayor, you know, I was unemployed for a short time last year. Um, you know, I work now in Beaverton, and while I love the job, I hate the commute. Uh, so, you know, I would, uh, I'm going to work very hard to bring, you know, more jobs to East County so that East County citizens can, can uh, work w where, they, where they live. But, uh, you know, I mentioned in my opening that really local politics is about quality of life. And like the mayor, I don't have big political aspirations. I'll serve the city of Wood Village as long as they'll have me. 
uh, because, like I said, in, unless you're right there in the trenches with them experiencing what they're experiencing, then you don't really know for certain that you're having a positive impact on their quality of life. And so this is uh, where I hope to continue to serve if they'll bless me with their vote and it's where I continue to serve as long as they'll keep me. Thank you. And thank you to the audience for being here and for your participation. And for the candidates from Troutdale and Wood Village, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Thanks for having me.